Take Me Home, West Virginia. Harpers Ferry, to be specific, uh, this is the Shenandoah Staircase at 2.6 feet. It's a classic whitewater run, class two, class three, um, within an hour and a half of DC, within just like 40 minutes of Leesburg, so very easy to get to. Um, kind of scrapey, kind of low at this level. We were primarily practicing read and run, which makes sense when the river's going slow. Um, it was a little scrapey, bony at times, which necessitated some boat scouting. Overall, it was a great time. Um, and I'll put the put in coordinates in the description. And like much of my content, this is really designed to help new boaters visualize what they can expect if they're going to run this section at this level. So I hope you enjoy. And if you would like to leave any uh, feedback, criticism, comments, pointers, tips, please feel free to do so in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. first rapid here is called entrance and at this level there's barely enough water to get by um, I'm a little nervous scraping down here just because obviously you catch an edge somehow in such little water and uh, maybe you're in for a bad time so read and run is definitely the order of the day looking for enough water to make it through without scraping too much and certainly any rocks or objects pushing out of the water which might knock a boat over um, that hits it with the wrong angle and enough speed um, so lots of scraping today but still a good time definitely don't stay in if it's 2.6 <laughs> Okay, so Bull Falls is basically a series of chutes, that's to say channelized water, one, two, three, four, I believe, there might be five, but usually people are running chute number three. Chute number three with more water is usually a big green V with a little hole at the end of it. At 2.6 feet, it's a little bit bonier, um, and so approach the lip slowly, look for the water that's going to carry you through the hole. Um, and that's what we did today. You could either run it left or right of the hole. I'm sure there's other ways to run it, but for the most part, that's how we did it. And it did look like running right of the hole was a little more challenging for some people in slicier boats. I had the code with me and was not really so worried about flipping over.
useful skill in river running, particularly with a large group, is the ability to find a place to pause, wait for people to catch up, make a plan, make the next move. Sometimes that's going to be an eddy. Sometimes it can be a little surf wave like it is here. Um, so just be patient. Don't go off doing your own thing for safety reasons. Be aware of who's your sweep, that is to say the last kayak in the order, and who is first. And try to stay between those two people unless otherwise communicated. Now this might not look like much, and it's not, but at the same time there are ways to use this kind of water. We're catching surf waves, we're putting our boat at odd angles and seeing what happens with the rocks. For newer paddlers, I feel like this level was actually really instructive, particularly building up to maybe a more consequential read and run like the Castleman, which is actually what we paddled next. So that's the next video dropping here. In the overall progression, uh, this made a lot of sense. So if you're a newer boater or if you have newer friends and the Shenandoah is low, uh, it's a great opportunity to take them out. Okay, that was something about lunchbox follies. I'm not sure what's next, but sure it's pretty out here. This is the upper Shenandoah staircase. Ledges back and forth, and we pick our way down. All right, this is the upper Shenandoah staircase. Uh, upper, I think, referring to the fact that it's upriver of the bridge. Once you see that bridge, you know you're in for the staircase. And at this level, um, it was pretty cool because the water is very clear and you can see right through it to those ledges that make this staircase, which goes on for some, something like half a mile. Um, so it's pretty long also. You'll be in the lower staircase, I believe, once you go under the bridge and you'll see us work our way river right, picking our way through where there's enough water. Then there's a natural sort of stopping point and we ferry along river left um, under some of the staircase until we're about in the middle of the bridge, pick our way down through there, and then continue our ferry along um, ultimately to river left where we're going to play around on a pretty great surf wave. Um, enjoy! <laughs> Okay, and as a reminder, I'm paddling here with Kaleva River School's Cheat Light class. Cheat Light is a great program. You need your own boat, your own gear, a roll, and if you have those things and you want to warm up for the spring season, uh, the class runs in March and April, and it's usually sold out by like the second day it's posted, so get on that. And basically you get to paddle all of March and April, warm up, build your skills, culminating uh, the first weekend in May with the Cheat River Mass Occurrence. The Cheat Re River being a step up, I think for most people who do Cheat Light, uh, has some class four rapids on it. So if you're feeling comfortable at the end of the class, all warmed up, most uh, people are not actually racing in the Cheat Race, but it's a good place to show up, get to know the community, get to know the race, get to know the water and push yourself a little bit. So looking forward to that. And you'll certainly see footage here on the channel. Oh, shit. <laughs> 
ferrying along uh, these ledges is pretty fun and man i love seeing wildlife on the river and seeing the goose surfing <laughs> was fantastic That is a goose surfing. That goose is straight up surfing. Wow. There's a big edge of that. is a kayaking video but it's hard uh, to ignore the history of a place like Harper's Ferry as you're paddling through. Um, there's history and there's legend and I happen to really like ghost stories so I encourage you to go digging around here looking for some spooky Civil War history. Um, there's a lot going on but as you're paddling through you can look up to Maryland Heights see that old railroad bridge which is from the B&O Railroad heavily trafficked in the early 1900s um, and if you look really closely at that cliff face, you can see a faded painting. It reads, Menon's Borated Talcum Toilet Powder. And it's an advertisement aimed at travelers on that railroad. So um, just really encourage you to check out the town. It's a fabulous place. Okay, so Harper's Ferry, Shenandoah, Potomac, Confluence, Towpath, and Lucien. You can hike up there. It's called Maryland Heights. Long before the B&O Railroad, uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote in his notes on the state of Virginia, 1785, 
The passage of the Potomac through the Blue Ridge is perhaps one of the most stupendous scenes in nature. You stand on a very high point of land. On your right comes up the Shenandoah, having ranged along the foot of the mountain a hundred miles to seek a vent. On your left approaches the Potomac, in quest of passage also. In the moment of their junction they rush together, against the mountain, rend it asunder, and pass off to the sea. And if we're going to mention Jefferson, it feels fair to mention the people who lived there um, during and before him. The tribes occupying the Shenandoah Valley in the long period prior to the arrival of English settlements includes the Iroquois, also called the Six Nations, and Shawnee Nations, as well as the Catawba and Cherokee Nations of the South and the Delaware and Susquehannock Nations of the North.
so when people think about the staircase, for the most part, they're thinking about Bull Falls, the staircase, and White Horse. Uh, White Horse and Bull Falls, I think, are the main class threes here. And White Horse is basically just like a, at this level, a hundred yard wave train, maybe three to four foot waves. Um, and some of them are going to be directional. So it's not just a straightforward wave train like you might find at the gates in Lock 6. Um, it's more akin to something like the outflow on Maryland side of Little Falls. So big waves bouncing up and down, uh, but also want to make sure that you keep your edge and none of those side waves knock you off balance, off course, and get you sideways where you can e lose your edge more easily. Um, but lean forward, paddle hard, you're going to be fine. No worries at all. Bad, bad, bad. Bring